Let's give it up for the Unity North Band. I think we can do better than that. Let's give it up for the Unity North Band. <laughs> that is the magic they deserve. Thank you, Unity North. We are here on the second week of Advent honoring peace. Now, we can honor peace, we can appreciate peace, but we can also celebrate peace. Am I right? And we are about to celebrate the beauty and the joy of peace with Nadia, who is going to read a peace poem as we celebrate Advent, this Peace Sunday of Advent. Many in the world say peace is a way, but when you ask them what peace is, they're not sure what to say. Peace has many faces. There's more than just one. Compassion, love, and kindness are some. Show how does the world at war reach peace. Acceptance, forgiveness, all fear released. Finding peace in our lives starts with a choice. Go within and listen to your inner voice. Practice patience, love even more. When the whole world does this, there will be no more war. Outside, we look different, but inside, we're the same. Children of God from ones we came. Peace starts inside with me and you. Becoming the change is what we must do. Thank you, Nadia. Beautifully, beautifully done. You're an amazing light in this world. We're so grateful you brought your light into this space. And we're going to be kindling lots of candles today. We've candled the, the candle, the kindled the candle of faith and hope and the candle of peace. And, and Nadia has kindled the candle of our hearts, yes? But we're not just in Advent, we are smack dab in the middle of Hanukkah. And so I'm going to invite the panel to stop for a second, and uh, we're going to light those candles later in the service. But right now, I invite you to join with our Jewish brothers and sisters in recognition of the light that is being kindled every night of this past week. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshano Blessed are you, Adonai, ruler of the universe, who makes us holy through your commandments and commands us to kindle the Hanukkah lights. Let's take a moment to close our outer eyes as the music now continues. And let's allow ourselves to be present to the miracle of the light that each one of us brought into this space and into this room. Allow ourselves to be fully present to the light within ourselves so that we can be present to the light that is in others. As we come together on this Sunday morning, may we recognize the face of God everywhere we look. May we find the, the, the light of God in every interaction we have, those that are easy and maybe those that are not so easy. We allow ourselves to be present to light, and by doing so with this intention, this focus, and this purpose, light becomes our experience. And so we say thank you, God, doing business as all the lights in this room, as all the lights of those who are watching online, either live today or throughout the week. When those lights come together, this world is a brighter place. And for this, we are grateful, and it is this that we celebrate. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Together, thank you, God. All right, so it is Advent. Oh, I forgot the amen. Amen. So it is Advent, and we're going to sing carols. We're in the season of singing carols. So I'm going to up on your feet. We're going to do an old carol that we all know really well, but we're going to do it kind of with a different groove, a different feel. So I invite you to sway a little bit and get your body involved in singing the first Noel. Together we sing. The first Noel. Angels did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so let's hear it unity. Oh, well, no, well, no, well. 
sashay yourself to your left and your right. Get into the groove and welcome that person next to you or across the room. Let her know you are grateful that they are here this morning. So we sing so well and hallelujah and all that's good and holy to those of you that are joining us online. We sing a Merry Christmas to you, a Happy Hanukkah, and whatever it is you celebrate, we know you as the light of the world, and we're great, grateful that you brought that light into our space today. Thanks for being here. Okay, Unity North, let's come on back. Let's get in that sachet a little bit, and let's hear Noel one more time. Let's just hear the chorus, because that's the easy part. Come on now, Noel. on how to sway uh, after the second service. Danielle. All right, my friends. Now, the Christmas time, the Christmas season is a wonderful time to visit Unity North, but honestly, we are always this full of joy. We always have this energy, yes? Yes? So let's make sure that anyone that is new here today knows that. So right now we have our welcome team coming forward and they have welcome packets in their hands. In that welcome packet is a Let's Connect card because we want to connect with you. We want this to be your first day and not your last day. You can fill that out in pen and paper. You can scan the QR code and um, give it back to us later. But we want to make sure that we stay connected. So remember that spirit and that energy we were just talking talking about yes all right we're about to pour it on our newcomers so if this is your first time here today please raise your hand nice and high in the air so we can shower you with love keep your hands up until you get a welcome packet <laughs> That's how we do it here at Unity North. That is the love and the energy that is present every Sunday and every week. Thank you for choosing Unity North today. Around the room, we have our prayer chaplains that are holding us in the highest divine light. Thank you very much to Mary, to Michael, to Juanita, to Jagrati for holding us in sacred space in the sanctuary online. Again, thank you for choosing Unity North today. Now, it's the most wonderful time of the year and the most wonderful time time of the service it is it is announcement time let's find out what's happening in this amazing community lots and lots so here are some small groups that are happening soon today we have our LGBTQ and friends sack lunch gathering that is happening at 1245 in the connections room bring your lunch bring yourself but just make sure that you come and show support and be with others in love and allyship and kinship we also have our support group for widows and widowers happening today at one o'clock in the joy room then coming up this week we have our prayer shawl meeting our labyrinth walk and meditation but please note that the woman of unity meeting is canceled for this go round but we've got lots of opportunities to stay involved and to stay in fellowship and in our next announcement 
We have none other than the wonderful, the amazing, the energetic Mike Stott coming to talk about the holiday match. Good morning. Many of you know I'm the treasurer and I also serve on the prosperity committee. And I have learned over the last few years that you cannot give more than you receive in this church. And this year's holiday match is so freaking exciting. <laughs> we have been unexpectedly blessed. We've had angel donors commit to donating $40,000 as a holiday match. Come on. <laughs> Which means if you pull the envelope out <laughs> right in front of you or you go to the app right up there, you can donate to match that $40,000. I'm holding it's going to be more than matched as it has been for the last two or three years. So you all are wonderful. You blow the finance committee and the prosperity committee socks off when we talk about how generous the congregation is and how open they are to receiving when they give so abundantly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. You're knocking him off his feet, too. <laughs> All right, my friends. And then our next announcement. Christmas Eve is coming up, and we have, we've got a full day. We've got an 11.15 service, of course, and then we have a beautiful 5 o'clock service called Not That Far From Bethlehem. This is where we will see the beauty and the talents and the joy of our young ones. And then our 7 o'clock service, Many Paths, One Christmas. And when you talk about a multicultural experience, this is the one. So come all day, come for one. We'd love to see you all day on Christmas Eve so many different things to choose from. I do want to let you know that that morning service is going to be a quiet meditative service. So the band will be here in the evening, not here in the morning, and it's going to be simple and quiet and peaceful. It's a great way to enter into the Christmas Eve experience. Absolutely. And in our last announcement, we know that many of you have um, businesses here in Unity North, and 2024 could be your year. So make sure you check out the business directory and see if that's something you'd like to have your business featured in so we can continue to support each other and be the family that we are. Speaking of family... <laughs> Right now, we have Tempe and Jeannie about to bless us with song, with this, uh, right? All Come right. on, let's just put our hands together. We're already ready in spirit. Tempe and Jeannie, it's all yours. night he knelt by her as she gave birth but it wasn't his child it wasn't his child yet still he took him as his own and as he watched him grow it brought him joy he loved that boy but it wasn't his child it wasn't his child
everybody. You know, we can debate and we can argue till we're blue in the face about this story of Christmas, how it began, what happened in the middle and what happened at the end. But what good does that do? What good does it do to argue about the, the mythology or the realness of any part of the story? You see, the story involves a man, Joseph, who kind of got written out of things there a little bit. And I want to bring Joseph, the Joseph that lives within each and every one of us, into the field right now without debate or argument. It didn't happen the way it necessarily has been sold or told. But who cares? Did it happen exactly the way we have forever celebrated the holiday? I don't really care. Because what can happen here is that that character of Joseph held space for something. There was, a, there was a man involved there, and he held space for his bride, the divine feminine. He held space for a child that, by the story, was not his own, yet he was present. I don't want to talk about presence today, and this might be a little bit different delivery than you're used to from me, which is why I'm sitting down, and you'll understand yeah, who's laughing? They're like, the, the camera crew is going, yeah, he's sitting down, how long is he going to stay there? But I want us to be fully present, and I want each of us to get in touch with the divine character of Joseph within us that is being called in our life, in our humanity, on our earthly walk, to hold space. And you're going to come again, up against people that uh, it won't be easy. It won't be easy to love. You are called to hold space anyway. You're called to be the presence of love anyway. Anybody know the name Gary Zukoff? Yep. Yes, heavy hitter in uh, all kinds of movements, not the least of which is our movement, Unity, New Thought. I remember the first time I got to meet Gary Zukoff, I'd read his book, The Seed of the Soul, and the Dancing Wooly Masters, and was blown away with the concepts that in, out of that man's mind. And he was introduced, I was playing music, but when Gary Zukoff was brought to a stage of about a thousand people in the audience, I was so excited to meet this great master, this incredible thinker. And the introduction they gave him was flowery. Oh, it was like, this is going to be the best night of my life. Everyone paid money to be there to hear Gary Zukoff speak. And then Gary came up after the introduction. And literally, I won't do it for as long as he did it, but it was about five minutes. This is the way Gary Zukoff greeted the crowd. And then he went, wow. And that's the reaction. People laughed. Wow. And at that moment, I did not have the capacity to understand what true presence was or what true peace was. Oh, my money back. 
Where, where are all the profound words that this man had to offer? I had my notebook ready to take the notes, and for five minutes all he did was look at us. And then all he had to say was, wow. Wow. I got the opportunity to play music for Gary Zukov a number of times after that, in groups of a thousand, in groups of ten. And I began to realize that there was nothing missing from Gary Zukov in that moment, but there was everything missing from within me to not understand the incredible power of holding presence, of holding peace, of holding oneness. You know, I was keenly aware as I went through my message, I like to go back and look at my messages, that I filled up last Sunday with a lot of words, a lot of ideas. I was so excited to do that. And I kept telling myself as I watched that talk, breathe, breathe, take a breath. And I realized that, you know, after spending time with Gary Zukov, I learned what it meant to be present. And yet I'm still learning what it means to be present. And I want to explore a little bit about why there were so many words, a 39-minute talk, which could have been 20. And what was it about me that I can learn in watching that and talking to myself, breathe? And I reflected this week on a man who touched my life, who doesn't even know that he touched my life. It was my first year of seminary, not Unity Seminary, but Interfaith Seminary. And I was uh, going to be licensed, and we're all wearing these beautifully angelic-looking white robes and, and, and clothing. And there was a big class. And as the faculty stood up to hold space for all the students, there was a Catholic priest that was there. He was about six foot five, maybe six foot six. And he had a wingspan. I wish he'd been my partner on the pickleball court. And as he stood up, he was right smack dab in the center of that in his black priestly garb and the ceremony began the music began to play I don't know the man's name he would not know my name from Adam if he heard my name yet I carry him with me and he stood up there in his six foot five frame and he held his hands out and he held space for every single student the ones he liked the ones he didn't know and the ones he didn't like now, you may think that's no big deal. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. The ceremony went on for about 45 or 50 minutes. Ever hold your arms out for that long? I watched him. And I, can, I cannot tell you what words, not one word that was spoken at that moment. But I can tell you that his hands never wavered in his commitment to holding space for everyone in that room. His hands and his arms never wavered from holding space for me. We'd never had a conversation, yet when I walked forward to receive my license, he was as present as any human being on the planet. And I carry him with, him, with me today, and like I said, he doesn't have any idea that I carry him with me, yet it was presence that touched me at a place of depth not words. It was presence and peace and the ability to hold sacred space. Gary Zukov did it. A Catholic priest did it. Both who were a little bit left or right of my thinking as a religious person, as a spiritual person. He held something for me, and that's what Joseph did. Joseph held space. As a foster parent... I was a foster parent for many, many years, and I realized I had the ability. I just hadn't recognized it. Hundreds of kids came into my home, and some of them were very likable. Some of them were really damaged. All had been abused and neglected and treated in ways that no child or adult should ever be treated. Yet each one of them was welcomed into our home with a clean slate. We didn't look at the paperwork that said, this is the mistakes they've made. We didn't look at the behaviors that had manifested in really um, horrible ways. But we held our, our arms open to these children, and we said, come home. Come home. 
And you'd think, well, it was an instantaneous healing. Suddenly all the years of abuse and all the years of pain were healed the minute they came into our lovely home and were welcomed in with loving parents. I would love to say that life was that easy. It wasn't. But week after week, month after month, and some of those kids, it took a year, two years. But they began to trust again, to trust that open arms meant open arms in this place. It wasn't a closed fist. It was an open hand that was not going to close. And I realized that I had the capacity. I did that, and I didn't recognize it. And so today, I want to challenge all of you. There's gauntlets going to be thrown down. Do you have the ability to live with your arms up for as long as it takes for humanity, for yourself, for that difficult person in your life, for those that are experiencing war, those that are perpetrating war? Do you have the ability to hold your hands up as long as it takes and to welcome them home into your heart? And where is the edge of you closing that home? The healing will never happen. Anybody ever put a timeline? Timeline on the healing? These kids should have been fine by now. They've been in this beautiful home with loving arms for two weeks. Two weeks cannot erase a lot of pain. My mic is what? It's a little off? Okay, well then I'll pick up. Let me do this one. The minister is a little off too. Is that better? Okay, let's go back to the beginning. No. And here's what I learned from these three experiences that no person, no matter the person likable, known, unlikable, we can hold space for them. That's what Advent is about, holding space. That's what Joseph was about. That's what a foster parent's about, holding space. That's what Hanukkah is about, holding space. I don't know about you, but I think the world needs a lot more presence than presence at this time of year. Have you noticed that? We're all about filling the space, like a minister doing a 39-minute sermon. We're filling the space. Why is that? What's missing within me that I feel like I have to give more, 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 more? Can I be more Gary Zukov-like and just experience the wow of being present to each other? Oh, that's not enough. Why isn't it enough? It has to be enough. Because there aren't enough presents. There aren't enough lights and trees and ornaments. There aren't enough candles to light that's going to take away the pain of anybody. Any child, no matter how young or old, our job is to hold presents. Sit with that for a moment. Our job on the planet at this time is to be the portal and the avenue and the vehicle through which peace makes its way to the planet. Let it begin with me. Pay no attention to the microphone. Let it begin with me. I'm going to invite Danielle to light the center candle, which is called the Shamash candle, sometimes known as the helper candle. And I'm asking you to let that candle represent you today. That you kindle something in your heart that transcends presence. We can, you, can sit, you can sit back down. It's going to be a second. That you kindle something in your heart that you don't need a thousand words. You know, all the words that we gave to these foster children, they were meaningless. Maya Angelou said, people are going to forget what you said long after, five minutes after you say it, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. A Catholic priest made me feel something without a word, without a present but only with presence. A foster child felt something that transcended the words of counsel and guidance. Yes, those were important, but at the end of the day, they'd call, they'd call back after years of not seeing them, and they'd say, I was sitting, sitting somewhere having a Christmas, and there was a smell that crossed my nose, and I remembered you. I was a child that was at my house for a month, a month, but I remembered the smell and I knew who I was. There are people you have touched you will never ever hear from. There are people 
that don't know that you even are still walking the planet that have touched your life, yes? It was not the gifts they gave you. It was the presence they brought to your life. The world needs more presence and fewer presence. Gifts are not needed right now, wrapped either in paper or in fancy sermons. There's a hundred million things that are filling the void right now, and maybe we just need to stop filling the void and be in the void. Breathe. I ask myself, what, am, what are you avoiding by being present? What are you avoiding? And I watched that talk from last week, and I asked that question. That talk could have ended at 15 minutes or 20 minutes. It could have even ended at 25 minutes. But I watched myself. It's just something we do as ministers. We critique ourselves. And I went, it was complete. It was good. But I kept going. And I realized that there was something I was afraid of. It was ap approval. I need, this message has to be the best message ever delivered on the face of the planet. And if I feel like I haven't reached the heart of the people with what I want to say, let me add 5,000 more words to it. And what I watched is the effectiveness of that talk at 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 25 minutes. Finally, at 39 minutes, the effectiveness went away when all you really needed to do was have one idea and then have me hold presence for you and spirit for you. There's somebody in your life that does not need more words, more ideas and more theology, more gifts. In fact, you know, there was one Christmas that we went over the top getting Christmas gifts for our foster kids. And I've never heard, never in the history of Christmas has any kid ever said this. But our son Adam, who we later adopted, was sitting there and he looked at us and he says, can I stop opening presents now? Uh-oh, lesson learned as an adult. He was hungry for presents. He was hungry for spirit and peace and not hungry for one more box to open. But what are we afraid of? I want to hear from you now. What are we afraid of that we don't allow ourselves to just be present in the silence? Call it out. Vulnerability. What else? Rejection. What was that, Chad? Risk. All of the above, all these things we have gotten afraid. Fear is driving the human race right now. Fear is driving religion on the planet right now. So let's have fancier programs. Let's have a bigger orchestra for Christmas. Somewhere there's a man going, you messed it all up. Somewhere in the simpleness of Hanukkah, somebody, the Maccabees, are going, you messed it all up. I don't need more stuff. We don't need more stuff to honor the light that I brought, the presence that I brought. We just need more intimacy, and we're afraid of intimacy. We're afraid of vulnerability. You know, let me tell you, it, it was uncomfortable watching Gary Zukov sit there. But eventually the room got to the wow. Got to the wow. I want the human race to get to the wow, and I want Unity North to lead the charge to the wow. The miracle. It's the miracle of all these holidays. There's like 18 holidays in the month of December that are celebrating light. We're going to celebrate three of them throughout the holiday. But the reality is, I want to get to the wow that we have missed over and over and over every single year. And that means stop Breathe. Not go more, not do more, not say more. Your message can be delivered in 30 seconds. It doesn't need 39 minutes. Instead of holding a thought of fear, which finds its roots, as my talk did last week, in not enough. I'm not enough, so I have to be vulnerable, because I don't, I don't believe in myself. I don't have a belief in myself, so I've got to put more words into the program. I did not believe in my role as a foster parent, so let me get some more presents. Can we quit opening presents and just be present? 
How many people have ever played, maybe you are today, an idea and an energy of not enough? It's part of the human experience. And we've become these hungry ghosts, perpetually giving more, doing more, playing more. And we fill up our holidays of light with all of these things to fill a hole that's never going to be filled until we know I am enough. Put your hand on your heart with me and say, I am enough. Do you really believe that? I am enough. There's a thing going around the planet. I've heard it a lot this year, but it's been around forever, called the imposter syndrome. And I've had many really vulnerable conversations with people who are holding an energy field that's very similar to one that I have played in the past, and it's still right there. If people really knew me, they'd know I have no idea what I'm doing. Anybody ever feel that? If people really saw behind the curtain to the Wizard of Oz, they'd realize I have no idea how to do what I'm doing. And the reality is I don't. But when I get caught up in the ego, you get a, minute, a talk that's 39 minutes long and not 15 minutes long. I've got to come up with more words. I'm relying on myself and not on the presence of God, the presence of light. I'm relying on my limited capabilities as a human being and not the Christ light. Hanukkah is a story of enoughness, plain and simple. And we would do good to study that enoughness. Here we have a war going on, much like times today. The Maccabees and the Syrians are at war. And the Maccabees are about to be destroyed because there isn't enough oil. Not enough. A consciousness, not enough. I don't have enough wisdom. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough whatever it is. It's represented by Hanukkah. Not enough oil in that story. Yet the Jewish people are some of the most faithful people on the planet. I know that there's enough. God is enough. So put your hand on your heart again and say, God is enough. God, by whatever name you want to give that energy and that essence, is enough. And so our job during the holidays of light is to kindle that shamash candle, ourselves as the shamash candle, the helper candle, to first know I am enough and God is enough and God is enough doing business as me. Say that last phrase together. God is enough doing business as me. Feel that. Then you can walk into an arena and put your hands out for 45 minutes, for an hour, for a lifetime. That's what the world needs right now. The Jewish people need it right now. The Palestinian people need it right now. The Ukrainian people need it right now. The Russian people need it right now. And the people sitting next to you, right where you are in this room, need it right now. It was, they're not your child, not your monkey, not your circus. They're God's child. And so you get to be the one. Maybe you're the miracle one to foster a different idea, a new paradigm, to kindle a candle. I'm going to invite uh, Danielle to light the other candles. The story of Hanukkah is there's only enough oil for one night. But through faith and belief and truth and leaning into the God essence, somehow the miracle occurs. Eight days of oil, the Maccabees had the faith and they weren't destroyed. And a miracle happens. Kind of a little bit like this. Wow. Wow. Our job during this season of light, Hanukkah, Advent, Kwanzaa, and the other celebrations of light, is to know that there is enough fuel in a higher consciousness and a higher vibration. There's enough fuel, enough love, enough light, enough life in you when you partner with that divine essence to have the wow that we're all seeking, the miracle that we're all seeking. And it's not going to come through more doing. It's going to come through more being. Yes? Take a breath with me. I realize that sometimes I have not called this community up to its highest expectation. I go, we can't sit in silence for that long. Oh no, we can't sit in silence for that long. And let me tell you, the most meaningful service that has happened this year 
happened just a few weeks ago. It was the service of remembrance. And I, I get tears in my eyes right now bringing that service up. Not because of the beautiful words that our chaplain shared, amazing prayers, heart-filled words, but it was the moments of silence. It was the moments of peace and stillness when somebody, and I'm going to use his name, I think he's here, Dave Patterson lost his beloved wife, Anne, this year. And everybody who came up to light a candle to remember, to remember somebody that they're, they're grieving. And I watched this congregation do this. You know, we're a bit of a restless group at Unity North, and any, any given service, somebody gets up and is walking out, walking in, and any given service, okay, the minister's gone way too long. He has 38 minutes, not 39. And that evening went on longer than we had planned and expected. But when Dave Patterson got up here and lit a candle for his son and his wife, you could have heard a pin drop, and it was complete silence. No words needed to be spoken. But each of us as a foster parent held Dave in our heart, held every person who came up here and lit a candle in our heart, and nobody got up. Nobody left the room. I'm saying what the world needs right now is for nobody to leave the room when it gets difficult. When... Nobody needs to leave the room when it gets ugly or when the child before you, whether they be 10 or 80, needs you to hold the space for them. And when you're watching the news, you don't know those people. They will never know you, but you can be the container of Hanukkah, the container of enoughness, a container. I can't possibly make a difference. My little prayer won't make any difference at all, so we get up and leave the room. Let me tell you, whether it made a difference to Dave Patterson that night or not, I sat here and it made a difference to me. And I go, I want more of that. I want to channel the inner Gary Zukov. I want to be so present that I'm awestruck. And I go mute with the wow that we truly belong to each other. That's what this is about. Each of those candles was lit. There are eight people in your life that need you to know that you're enough and then go light their candle. You need to be the helper. God, it's like Santa's helper. We used to tell the kids, oh, well, that's not the real Santa. That's Santa's helper. Well, guess what? You get to be Santa's helper, Jesus' helper, the Maccabees' helper. You get to be the helper for those that maybe don't show up the way you think, but they need your light and they need your presence. I am of Irish heritage. Many of you know that. I can't tell a joke without falling into an Irish accent. But in my heritage, I also reflected in my meditation preparing for today. Anybody ever heard of the doorway of reconciliation? You were on the trip with us. There is a doorway that hangs in the middle of St. Patrick's Cathedral. And again, at the time, the world was at a place of war. The Fitzpatricks and... Uh, the Barretts were at war, two families fighting. And this fight was going on and on and on, much like what's happening in Ukraine, on the Gaza Strip, and in the hearts of many people, there was war going on. And the Fitzpatricks chased the Barretts, the Barrett family, into St. Patrick's Cathedral, and both sides were realizing this has gone too far. What have we done? This is so ugly. So the Fitzpatrick said, they said, come out. This is the end of the war. And I remember a foster child coming into our home and having me say, it's okay. The war's over. You're safe now. Well, every foster child said, yeah, right. You're just one more adult that's calling me out and lying to me. And this is what the Barrett said in Ireland. There's no way I'm coming out there. It's a trap. And so what the Fitzpatricks did still touches my heart. 
and they had somebody go and drill a small little hole in the front of St. Patrick's Cathedral. And then the leader of the Fitzpatrick family took, took off his weapons and his armor, and he walked to that door, and he put his hand through. Now, that takes guts. It takes courage. He could have lost his hand. And I would love to tell you that there's no risk in you holding space for people, extending your hand. But the war stopped in that moment as the leader of the Barrett clan reached out. They shook hands, and it stopped in that moment. I want the holidays that we're celebrating to be the extending of a hand. And he saw on the marquee, be the first person who has the guts who has the courage to not leave the room, but to walk up to the front door and put your hand through, enough is enough is enough. We want wars to stop in Ukraine and Israel. I want wars to stop in our conversations over lunch today. I want wars, as we're heading into a very politically divided next year, we're going to be celebrating diversity, and I am challenge each and every one of you to be the first person to extend the hand of peace. Whether you understand or not, whether you ever speak to that person or not, you are called to be the container of the Christ, the container of the light. Let's have the band come back up. To be the courage to know that you are enough and to know that your children don't need more boxes to open. They need to know that they are loved without condition, unconditionally. And yes, you're going to put your hand out to somebody and it may feel like it gets slapped. It will. Put the hand out again, slapped. Put the hand out again, slapped. And then put the hand out and suddenly the wars stop. But you can't leave the room. It's not going to happen overnight. It may take years. I don't care how long it takes. We are the ones that are going to lead that charge, yes? Because we are the helper candles. We are the shamash candles. We are the ones that are going to make the difference. Go ahead and uh, play a little music. I'm asking you to be the one that knows you're enough to nurture the child in need, in grief, in pain, and to as long as it takes, hold a space for that 80-year-old child, that 50-year-old child. And to just be there in space. Let fewer words be there and more presence. To birth the light for the one who is stretching and becoming. Be the Catholic priest. I don't really resonate with Catholicism much. But I do know that one of the greatest ministers I ever experienced was a Catholic priest. Who never spoke a word to me. Sit in the presence whenever and wherever you get the chance. That's what will bring peace on earth. Look around the room and behold the Christ. And don't just glance. Meet somebody's eyes. And maybe that's the person who needs to know. I'm here. Welcome to my home. You can stay as long as you need to heal. And I will not put myself out of the room, and I will not put you out of the room no matter how ugly it might get. And when we can do that, and enough of us can do that, guess what? Guess what happens? Wow. Together. Wow. That is the miracle of Hanukkah. That is the miracle of Christmas. I invite you to take a deep breath with me as we move into a time of meditation. Prayer of St. Francis. We will get a little Catholic here. And I invite you to take this prayer of St. Francis and picture yourself for somebody right now who needs you to hold space and presence for them. Let's put the lyrics up on the screen. And let's bring the lights down a little bit. And let's all of us collectively become a manger, a manger of consciousness, a manger of possibility. 
as we sing these words from St. Francis. Together. Make me an instrument, Lord, of thy peace, as I give love, love I receive. you to hold your hands out. Ooh. As I awaken the living light in me. Let's sing this one more time. Keep your hands up. Feel what it is to be tired, but still be the presence of peace. Make me an instrument, Lord of thy peace, as I give love, love I receive. Make me an instrument, humble. As I awaken the living light in me, keep them hands up. Ooh. As I awaken the living light in me, and to bring that person into your heart. Welcome home. You can bring your hands down, place them on your heart. Continue to breathe. Continue to be. In honor of Hanukkah, I'd like to read the words of a rabbi, Rabbi Erwin Keller. And this was written October 17th, 2023. after a lot of people were murdered. Today, I am taking sides. I am taking the side of peace. Peace which I will not abandon even when its voice is drowned out by hurt and hatred bitterness of loss and cries of right and wrong. I am taking the side of peace whose name has barely been spoken in this winterless war. I will hold peace in my arms and share my body's breath lest peace be added to the body count. I will call for de-escalation, even when I want nothing more than to get even. I will do this in service of peace. I will make a clearing in the overgrown thicket of cause and effect so that peace can breathe for a minute and reach for the sky. I will do what I must to save the life of peace. I will breathe through my tears I will swallow my pride, and I will bite my tongue. And I will offer love without testing for deservingness. 
So don't ask me to wave a flag today unless it is the flag of peace. Don't ask me to sing an anthem unless it is a song of peace. Don't ask me to take sides unless it is the side of peace. Blessed are you, Adonai, who commands us to kindle the Hanukkah lights in all people. Let's simply be present in the silence for a moment and allow that light to burn brightly. I invite you to place your hand on your heart. And rather than saying amen, let us be awestruck of our own enoughness and of the possibilities that are as present as our heartbeat and our breath by simply saying together with one powerful voice, wow, together, wow. And so it is and so it shall be. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Richard. Let's take another breath together. And exhale together. And remain in that spirit of awestruck that he was just talking about. Because we're moving into offering time, but remembering that we are enough. What we give is already enough we are loved and whatever we give is already loved and blessed and put towards the highest good we have our ushers coming forward with offering baskets and we remember there are so many different ways to give we can give physically in the baskets that are coming um, coming towards us now if this is your first day at unity north and you filled out a let's connect card you can put it in the baskets as they come around we also have our prayer box coming forward and we remember that any prayers that are put in this box are seen in the highest light you are seen as whole and healthy and loved so in advance we bless the offerings as they come in whatever form whether it is online or in the basket so let's say our offering blessing together i am so blessed i am so prosperous and it is my great pleasure to share of my blessings and to share of my prosperity and in the giving the entire world is blessed thank you god and as baskets come along, we're going to sing our offering song together. So please, let's lift our voice in song and lift our hearts high. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed.
and we are blessed, we are awestruck, we are in wonder as we get to be blessed yet again by Tempe, Red Hawk, and Jeannie with a beautiful song, Wonder. Just to see me stand over my bed, disbelieving what they're seeing. They say I must be one of the wonders, God's own creation. Come on, sing with me, y'all. And as far as they see, they can offer no explanation. Questions, one confessions, reaching in my head to steal the glory of my story. They say I must be one of the wonders, God's own creation. And as far as they see, they can offer. One of those wonders you are God's creation and that's the same truth for everybody in this room you are one of the wonders you are God's creation and peace on earth starts with you let's get up on our feet and let's close with our peace song and let's as we do this extend the hand through a narrow passage to know that we are the vehicle through which peace on earth will make its way here together we sing Yeah. 
Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Sunday. John Stringer is back with us next Sunday doing the whole service. Come back and see us.